To get to this moment right here takes a lifetime. And there is a point in time that starts it all. But for some, family fun turns into so much more. It can become an obsession. They set out on their journey with a dream others wouldn't even consider. Weekend after weekend, long days and nights, getting knocked down time and time again. Every rep, every session, every lap, only one thing matters, getting faster, fitter, and closer to the goal of being pro. Learning the hardest lessons and never losing sight of the destination. Winning some, losing some, the amateur turns pro. But that isn't where the story ends. This is just the beginning. To be number one, to do what others can't, you need to be willing to do what most won't. Failure is not an option. Time and time again, they wonder if enough is enough. But every day, they keep pushing and pushing and pushing. And a lifetime of pain, struggles, setbacks, disappointment, and failure become the critical advantage to success. And to be world champion, it will all be worth it. Hello everybody and welcome to Abu Dhabi for round two of the FIM World Supercross Championship from the Etihad Arena. My name's Paul Malin, alongside me, former world champion and two-time 250 Supercross champion, Grant Langston. This is where we are coming from this evening for the latest stage of WSX and what a fantastic venue it is as well. You can hear the atmosphere, you're getting ready to go live with the racers here for SX2, their first race of the day. And uh, man, it's great to be here. And Grant, welcome first of all. And in terms of this arena, we've had the privilege of being here now for the past couple of days. Slightly different format to what we're used to in terms of points. So WSX, just that little bit different. Yes, it's really great to be here, Paul. And uh, it is. They have two classes, SX, SX2, which is 250s, 450s. They do two heat races each. That sets the grid, and then three main events. Obviously, the more points you score, the better it is for the overall. If you get max points, you will be the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix winner. Absolutely. Well, look, coming up on our show tonight, here's how things look. We've got the SX2 riders on their sighting lap at the moment, but we've got SX2 and Race 2 pretty much back-to-back. -back. There'll be a slight pause. There'll be WSX Race 1 and Race 2 back-to-back, -back. and then later on in the evening, Race three, the big ones that the determines the overall outcome, but this is fantastic. You can see the images there of where we're at. But uh, round one was in July at uh, Villa Park for the British Grand Prix. This is round two. And uh, this is how things have played out so far. Some of the highlights and uh, very interesting Grant Langston. Well, big deal here. You see at the back there, the number one, that's Shane McElrath, your defending champion and your points leader. Dead last round turn one. He's trying to come through the pack and of course, more drama it went from bad to worse terrible qualifying he's going to find himself in the back row sx class look at the number one the yellow bike also near the back ken roxton the man defending champion and also your points leader and they get shunted there not intentionally but he was at the back trying to come through and as you can tell very tough to pass in some sections he's going to find himself coming through and then in the hot lap ozzy matt moss with the fastest lap Unbelievable, the old man gets it done. And uh, wow, we are set up for a great evening of racing. We are, Matt Moss gonna be going the line on pole and uh, we'll do all the uh, qualifying gate positions in a moment. But uh, we've got a couple of other special guests here this oh, weekend. Yeah. Of course, Chad Reed, former two-time AMA Supercross champion and uh, down there in the field. And he's gonna be chipping in, chipping out with us. And so too, uh, Kristen Beat. She's down on the line now. And here she is, Kristen, there's a reason why you're down there on the start line. 
Guys, this is going to be a chaotic race right from the start. As you can see behind me, a double stacked start gate. That's going to put the riders starting from the second row at an immediate disadvantage. But even looking at this front row, I'm only seeing four efficient start lanes. Generally in racing, you want to own the inside. However, that gate pick this weekend has an immediate trajectory straight towards the triple lane, forcing these riders to fight for even less real estate on the tightest circuit of the season. But with more on this demanding check, Mr. Chad Reed. Guys, tonight what's crazy for me is, is that on the inside, controlled lighting, controlled temperature. When you come out here, it's bright, it's hot, it's at least 20 degrees difference. I believe that the outside here being so tight, the dirt changing so much and getting hard and slippery and choppy is going to be really challenging for the crew. So we've seen uh, a little bit of the circuit there, but uh, Grant Langston, let's take a look at it in more detail. Lovely aerial shot there. This is start straight. You pin it down in that first turn, it tightens up. There's the first rhythm section, which is different because you're coming out of the first turn. Here it starts, over the finish line. Get it clean. This section, very critical. The whoops, they're gonna break down all evening. Then it gets tight. You got the left, right, out of the stadium. Those ruts are getting deep. They've hit concrete already. Back in, also more ruts. Now you get to hit this rhythm. They'll go triple, triple, turn, big triple jump across the start straight, right over the finish line. That's Lapia at Abu Dhabi. Yeah, great there. And of course, you can see the double stack start line there, of course, that uh, Kristen was talking about. And that's significant because uh, Shane McElrath, who was 17th in his qualifying. Here's how the championship looks after the first round. McElrath and Anstey separated by just three points. But with McElrath starting on the second row over to the right side, it's just literally going to be very, very interesting because Anstey over on the right, as we look there, number 99, the, uh, the borders turn sideways. This SX2 race, eight laps. Down into the first turn, and it's the number three of Chris Bloss who finds his way into the lead. But McElrath with a lot of work to do. In fact, he's made a great start here. He's about mid pack down the inside. Wow. Great recovery for the number one, Grant. That was damage control right there oh, from the back row. I think he's about six or seven, but that could have been a lot worse. A good job from the defending champion. Chris Bloss it is who leads the way, though, and uh, Wilson Todd. The heat race winner earlier on in the night. He's there in second. Luke Clout there in third position. And that looks like the 141 of Maxim Dupre. And Anstey just tucked him behind him in fifth. Remember, he is three points behind Makarath coming into this weekend. And here comes Makarath to the inside. Yeah, tried to make a pass there. Couldn't quite see who that was. but Webster. Yeah. So if you're Max Anstey, you've got to make hay while the sun shines and try to get to the front and put some riders between you and the championship leader. This eight lap race, the first lap in the books, we move into lap two at a packed Etihad Arena here for the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix here in Abu Dhabi, the United Arab Emirates. Blos is leading the way here, and Chris Blos, the number three, who arrived here in uh, having had, what, a 12th, a 4th, and a 20th at the opening round, if he can come away with a, a win or a top three here, that will seriously elevate him up the leaderboard. No doubt about it. Chris Blos has a lot of experience, been around racing a long time, and he knows what it takes to be up there and did what he had to do. Got a good start, and now it's just about maintaining. There's the number 99, Max Anstey, not able to pull, him way, pull his way through the field at the moment after a mediocre start. McElrath a couple positions further back, coming into view any moment now. Or is he? Uh, I, I think he lost a few spots. Something must have happened. Yeah, back down to 11th place. So uh, not a good night for the number one so far. Uh, it's still early. Obviously, three main events and anything can happen. Remember, two back-to-back -back eight lap races here for the SX2 guys. We'll see something similar for the WSX riders a little later on, following on from these two heat races. But Clout down the inside, Whoa. trying to find his way through. Oh, he's trying everything. Goes to the outside, but the lines come together. Almost had Todd there. Danger is leaving the door open, though, as Whoa. Maxim Dupre charges down the inside of Clout and makes the pass, and Anstey goes as well. Oh, that was a twofer right there, so... <laughs> Poor old Todd just... Sorry, not Todd. Oh! He, did he hit neutral there when he landed, or did oh. he just down the back break? I think they tag that jump pretty hard sometimes. So, we're on lap five. Four laps complete. Chris Bloss continues to lead. Wilson Todd there in second. Dupre now third on the 141. The blue Yamaha. Fourth is Anstey. Fifth is Clout. 
Cullen Park 6, Cole Thompson 7, Nice Webster, Escoffier, Madgarath in 11th. Anstey will be leading the championship after this race. Wow, that's crazy to think. And if you look at the top uh, five, pretty much, I believe, have five different countries represented. So that's pretty impressive, too. Yeah, Neil Sonder here of uh, Chris Bloss leading the way. Fourth, remember, in race two at Villa Park, the British Grand Prix back in July. And uh, Dupre gets better drive. A little bit hesitant through the turn there for the 20 of Wilson Todd. Oh. Dupre now up in the second, and Anstey going after his teammate and does that as well. Moves into third place. Great moves from the 141 and the 99. These guys are hungry for it tonight. Yeah, it looked like uh, Todd was a little asleep at the wheel there for a moment. Lost two spots. Thankfully, his teammate had the intuitive to go around the outside. Now look at this, Clark coming back, and oh, aggressive move, clean but aggressive. And Todd then couldn't jump the triple, he had to go 2-1 and lost another position to I think, uh, well we'll see who it was actually in a minute because uh, as he comes over the line, Colin Park I think it was, that went through and capitalised. Todd now down in seventh place ahead of Nice, Kyle Webster and McElrath up to 10th. A lonely ride, but action-packed for him as well at the same time. Down there in 10. We are on lap 7 of 8. Man, he's got by fouls, but I tell you what, Max Ancy, the man on the mission, he is charging. You know he wants to get free back if he can. He knows every point right now is huge. Max Ancy, second in the championship chase, remember. Came here a second and a first and a second from the opening round. Looking to uh, maintain that streak of not finishing outside of the top two if he can here in this first race but Maxim Dupre who coming into this weekend has probably had about six or seven French Supercross races indoors and outdoors so he's very very well prepared and it shows in his riding tonight. Yeah he looks like a well-oiled machine right now but time's running out though. Time is running out. Chris Bloss getting ready to take the checkered flag here as the number oh. 66 goes down but to uh, Bloss wins race one, Dupre second, Anstey third, Clout fourth, Cullen Park, Cole Thompson, Wilson Todd ends up in seventh. McElrath clawed his way back to eighth place ahead of Luke Nice and Kyle Webster. Wow, that was intense. <laughs> intense is not the word. Fast, intense, and crazy. Well, give you a quick top 11 then. Chris Bloss with his first win, his first top three finish of the season as well here in Abu Dhabi. Then Dupre and Anstey, Clout and Park. Right, let's go down to the winner's zone. Chris Bloss is with Krista. The second, you were able to put more than a second on the rest of the field. Where are you finding this time, Chris? Yeah, I'm not too sure. I don't know what was uh, going on behind me, but I just tried to focus on my own race. And uh, my Honda Nils got me out to a great, great start. And uh, yeah, we got main two coming up. Chris, strategically, you were racing further inside than I saw other riders on the turns. Is that your arena cross background coming to play? Yeah, it's probably coming out right now. And uh, you know what? The whoops are getting super tricky. And uh, so is the rest of the track, actually. It's going to take for another good start. And uh, hopefully we can do that one more time. Paul, Chris Bloss finished the 2022 World Supercross Series Championship third overall, looking to rebound after Birmingham this year. Take a look at those race highlights then. Explosive start from that double stack gate. Shay McElrath already on the back foot with that second row start, but it was Chris Bloss who had the perfect race, quite literally, Grant Langston. Yeah, I mean, these races are short. We talk about you've got to get the start, which he did. He led from the front, no mistakes. There was action behind, some passing, but Max Anstey, the big beneficiary from this first heat because his rival way back. You see there, Dupree getting around Clout. And then up front, Clout then parked his way down the inside of Wilson Todd as he moved forward, and Anstey was going after the, uh, the rider ahead of him, but it was a win for Wilson, uh, for Chris Bloss. Heat two, coming up in a moment.
Just going back down to the grid here, and uh, you can see how warm it is here. It's been around about 28, 30 degrees here today. Very hot, very humid, especially when they go outdoors, Grant Langston. We can see it right here on screen. Oh, yeah, no doubt. I mean, they just came up the track. These guys, their heart rates get up close to 200 beats a minute, which is pretty ridiculous. And again, now they're just sitting there. There's no air on them. It's like a... They need So their mechanics are now radiated, you know, like fanning their radiators, trying to keep them cool. They're hot, they're sweaty, and they're sitting still, but it also helps to relax them. Well, let's just take a, a moment to talk about why these riders are in these grid positions as well, of course, because uh, when you think of someone like number one, Shane McArath, after his poor finish in his heat race, that gave him 17th gate pick, and these starting positions are for every race this evening. So when it came down to the riders deciding which gate pick they wanted before we came live on air, uh, McElrath, gate 17, decided, you know what, I'll park up behind Webster on that second row, just two to the right of the box, and that's why he's going to be parking there. So... Uh, a lot of interesting uh, start picks and still a lot of work to do for the rest of the races. Getting ready for SX2, Heat 2 here, Race 2, I should say, the final, uh, the second final. And uh, we were talking about Shane McElrath a moment ago, and Kristen is down on the start line with some news, I believe, about our points leader and defending champion. When you get sometimes hot and flustered, that's when you make mistakes. And uh, you can't afford to make a mistake around here because it's such a small tight circuit. And it's, it's a very short break between these races as well. You really don't get that opportunity. So apologies there. I just, Here we go. I just checked in with Shane McElrath. I asked him what's the mentality now. He said I was so frustrated, but I need to be more patient heading into the second GP race. I tried to rush a pass. I ended up blowing it. So Shane McElrath is learning with every lap how he has to race starting from that second row. Yeah, frustrating ride then for Shane McElrath there. And this is the thing. We talked about it in the press conference yesterday in the media center. We talked about it during the... Uh, the heat sessions today, and of course, patience is also a, uh, a key factor for the racing today. Well, absolutely. You know, that heat race from earlier wasn't good, and that's put him on the back row as we have a look at the Stop starting line. Yeah. Yeah, Wilson told going to the line first ahead of Luke Blount and Steve. Of course, that second row start with the uh, championship leader, defending champion, coming in this weekend, McElrath Gate. There, 17th, he goes to the line. He's on the second row once again, as is going to be the case for this race and the final race. But uh, we're getting ready to go racing once again. 32nd board already up. Chris Bloss, Maxim Dupre, Max Anstey, your top three in race one. Who's it going to be this time around? Another eight-lap SX2 race coming up right now. This time, Whoa. Max Anstey down the inside, and so too the number four of Luke Blount. As, uh, oh, a rider goes down there, and it's Bogle. McElrath and Blount down, down as well. Oh, multiple riders. Dupree. Dupree. Finished second in race one. Carnage everywhere on the opening lap. Matt Sensi, though, leads, and he's got clear track on his favorite part of the track through that group section. Cole Thompson is in second position. Good ride for the Canadian. Wow, has this championship taken a turn? McElrath came in with the lead, the momentum, and nothing is going his way, and all of a sudden, Anstey is just on fire right now. Number one, Shane McElrath, there he is. The number one down in, uh, well, he's buried again, isn't he? Right at the back, he's just coming back into the arena right now. As Anstey already over the start-finish line jump. Then into the, way, uh, into the whoop section, so the number 99 already over on the far side of the track. So it's uh, Anstey who leads. Take a look here, what happened on the opening lap. Oh, oh. Cloud got a handlebar there from Cole Thompson. It was well and truly clouded and hit the deck. Yeah, but that was not intentional. Uh, Cloud McElrath there as well. Look. Yeah, Cloud just came up short in that jump. Watch McElrath then back here, trying to thread the needle, and there's just nowhere to go. Oh, he, that's where he almost went down. There's Bogle tagging the back of him. You see McElrath look back, figuring out what it was, and then next turn, gets hit again. So uh, Anstey continues to lead. It looks like Cole Thompson in second position. Third is Bloss. And fourth looks like it's Webster. 
as they pop back into view here. Right down here below our commentary position. So Anstey making his way towards the, uh, the final turn as uh, Maxim Dupre, who's buried a little bit further back after that stunning race in race one, finds himself having a battle through as well. A little spread out at the front at the moment, but behind, a little bit deeper, it's getting intense. Adrian Escoffier there, the 137, another rider from France, this one on the Bud Racing Kawasaki, going after the fellow Frenchman of uh, Dupre, who nips up the inside of the 66, Henry Miller. But everybody else coming through here, there's Clout just off the back of that shot. Timing there just on the left seems to be a, a little bit out. But uh, let's go down to Kristen. She's down on the track side. Yeah, I'm standing in the mechanics area and watching the sign they're holding out. The last two signs I've seen have said the same message, kill or be killed. So when we talk about aggression, these guys have to have elbows out at this point in the race. Kill or be killed. Yeah. How many people have said elbows out this weekend? As the 122 of Mumford nips up the inside of uh, Debray, or is it the other way around? I well, think, they, uh, they were having, uh, watching, they were just having a dogfight right there, back and forth, squaring each other up, rubbing elbows. So just going to get out of my position here and just take a quick look, see where Anstey is now. Anstey has already cleared the whoops. He's got to get back to the 16 of Cole Thompson in second place. Then it's Blows, your winner from race one in third. So the overall classification between those two is going to be tight. Then Webster in fourth. Then it looks like the 59 there of uh, Robbie Wageman. And then the 401 of Jace Owen. Just to keep you up to speed. Yeah. The circuit here starting to slick up as well as we look down. See the shiny parts of the racetrack, yeah. Grant Langston. Very shiny, very polished. They've had more to the track. Here comes Dupre, down the inside of Mumford, who tries to check up, but realizes there's no point. Great move back from the 141. Yeah, these two are having a great battle. I think it's getting personal now. They've gone back and forth so many times, squaring each other up. But Dupre just riding really well. But for the most part, Max Anstey is starting to check out of this race. Here comes Dupre, back on the charge once more. Where can he get back to, though? That is the question. We are on our final lap. Max Anstey already through the way, uh, through the whip section. He's getting ready to exit the building and come back in again as the race leader. Thompson having a great ride as well. And Los, though, actually it's closed up a little bit. Some fantastic action going on back here, though, isn't there? As Anstey, triple, triple, back into the arena. Two corners from home. That eight of eight. Anstey just looking around, thinking, OK. But he is the race leader. Didn't see anything happen to him on the opening lap. Because Maxim Dupre went down. And, of course, uh, the inevitable is going to happen here. Black's going to go out to Dupre, and he's going to think, OK, well, what happened there? So we will try and adjust timing and scoring when we can, but uh, Max Anstey and his crew will be aware of the fact that he was the winner, and I'm sure as, uh, as well. So too will uh, Thompson and Blows and their crew. Well, off camera as well in the last turn, Clout went down again, fighting for position. So, so Maxim Dupre at the moment being shown as our winner, but uh, I think we know from the uh, eventful race that he had there. So we'll ignore that for now, but uh, for the record, Dupre, Yoda, Clout and Anstey. But uh, Anstey clearly the winner here after eight laps. So everybody in and uh, back off of the racetrack, but uh, Max Anstey, I'm sure, was the winner at the end of eight laps. So a little bit of confusion here, even for our SX2 riders. Let's take a look at the highlights then, and this will confirm things. Uh, 99. Max Anstey, down the inside look, Clout there alongside him on the number four. Clout though went down, McElrath tagged Bogle, Bogle went down through the first turn and uh, McElrath had more issues here getting slammed in that uh, second corner. But Anstey pulling clear 
at the head of the field. Blows having a good ride as well. But Dupre, well, he had his problems coming through traffic. That was the battle I was talking about. They were going back and forth. Mumford, Dupree, so good. Multiple laps. But, uh, yeah, Matt, uh, Maxim Dupre, a good charge through the field. And uh, he's looking to try and move in the top three this weekend. Of course, uh, he started the weekend sixth, but without the third, fourth, and fifth. Anyway, let's go down to Kristen. I believe she is with Max Anstey. I am, Paul, and Max, a turbulent race. You were able to improve on your first start, but we talked at the top of the show that inside gate pick has a direct trajectory towards that triple lane. How were you able to outrace it? Honestly, uh, the start is so important here, and I, and I figured it was safe. Um, luckily, my teammate was next to me, so I, I was hoping that we could, uh, you know, open the first turn up a little bit. But man, it was hairy. The first lap was, was crazy. I, I hit someone in this turn and, and almost lost the front and ended up doubling the triple. And I was like, wow, it's uh, pretty crazy. But I'm, uh, I'm happy to have come away with a 3-1. It's, it's so tight out there that anything can happen. Max, you seem exhilarated. Is this challenging? How are you approaching these races? Yeah, it's, it's so tight and it's so intense that it's, it's different for everyone. None of us have ridden something like this, so um, pretty cool. I'm excited to be here. Abu Dhabi is amazing. Yaz Island is amazing. Um, the fans, everyone here from uh, people that are from here and people that are not from here. I know there's a lot of Brits here uh, in, the fa in the stadium here, and uh, man, it's awesome to see all you guys. Cheers, guys. Woo! Congratulations to Max. Hey, I've got one more thing to say to the Brits. I'm trying to be the next British world champion, so make sure you cheer for me, boys. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much, Max. And a quick note before we got to Max, he was actually talking about the start gate in front. He was asking if you could prep it or not. We now know that that is not something the riders can do. Yeah, good ride for Max Anstey. And uh, more from him in a moment. Can he come away with the overall win at the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix after race three? Well, a little bit of calm down here on the stadium floor, but while we do have that peace and quiet, let's go down to Chad Reed. Here he is. Let's see what he has to say. Yeah, guys, I'm out here on the track just checking it out, and it's crazy to me to see these whoops. Everyone, like all the riders that I've talked to throughout the last two days, are actually quite excited about the whoops with the track being as tight as it is and as slippery. It's just really important to get good runs, good consistency out of that, and I'm just over here checking it out, and they're getting really cupped out. So I think as this 450 main event rolls in here soon, it's going to be really important for these guys to be consistent in that area. Triple lane, er, uh, on the finish of the triple lane, and what I'm noticing here, what we thought was going to be a really sandy track that would blow out actually has a good clay composite to it and it's starting to pack in so much so it's getting hard pack and I'm noticing on the landing of the triple we're actually starting to even see some blue groove it's really hard it reminds me of Glen Helen for those who follow the American Outdoor Series this is like pure Glen Helen guys super hard pack super California dry but that's going to suit a lot of the riders who are based in California Thanks, guys. Well, as you can see, we've got some uh, little dudes making their way down to the line. Of course, 65 and 85 cc riders made up of uh, some uh, local guys and from different walks of life. And what a fantastic experience this is for them here. There's around about, uh, what, six or 7,000 people inside this Etihad Arena in Abu Dhabi. I'm sure they've never ridden in front of a crowd this big. They've certainly never ridden on a supercross track like this before. 
And uh, from their point of view, this is an experience they will never forget. So uh, these guys will be uh, hitting the track in just a few moments' time. Gas Island Marina Circuit is the home of the Etihad Airways Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, which this year hosts the Formula One season finale in three weeks on Sunday, November 26. In addition to the racing, there'll be some big name acts performing during the weekend as well. Shania Twain, Foo Fighters, US singer Ava Max and Dutch DJ Tiesto. Opened in 2009, Yas Marina Circuit was the second of four F1 tracks built in the Middle East. Well, that was just one of the little gems we've seen here this weekend so far. Fantastic racetrack, Grant Langston. But you, uh, Kristen, Max, Kenny Roxon had the chance to go to Ferrari World a couple of days ago. And I believe it was quite the experience. Yeah, it was quite a blast, trust me. Check it out. Check it out. Ferrari World Abu Dhabi is home to the world's fastest roller coasters. The highest loop ride, the tallest space frame structure ever built on the planet, and over 40 record-breaking attractions. This is the ultimate destination for non-stop, hyper-adrenaline, heart racing fun. <laughs> oh, man. Who the heck invented roller coasters? So obviously the biggest attraction, arguably, here is the world's fastest roller coaster. We've got two guys that go pretty fast on dirt bikes. What do you think about this? We go pretty fast, but we're not going 240 kilometers per hour in less than five seconds, which is 150 miles per hour. So, I mean, I don't really know what to expect. I've never had that feeling in my life. Yeah, it's definitely, um, I, I actually have done this one a couple of weeks ago, so, so I know what to expect. These boys are, uh, are in for a treat. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> this is like my starts on the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I did not expect it to be this gnarly. That was next level. Crazy. We didn't think we were going to make turn one at that speed. Oh Holy smokes. That's nuts. Don't get any facial shots. It might look a little. leaving you boys to it. I've, uh, I've been on this one a couple of weeks ago and I don't want my uh, my lunch to be all over you two. So uh, have fun boys and I'll see you at the races. Sounds good. We appreciate that. <laughs> Hopefully we'll come back soon. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs> <Holy> smokes. <laughs>
We got to ride a lot of the world's gnarliest roller coasters. Kenny, what was your favorite? Um, I would say the Formula One one was the fastest one, most adrenaline in a short period of time. And then uh, Flying Aces is probably my number two. And uh, Turbo Track, you can't go wrong with any of them, honestly. Oh, yeah. And there's so much to do around here. You did some karting as well. Yeah, I've been here for a little bit over 24 hours. We've done go karts, we've done roller coasters. It was an action packed day so far, but next stop for us is racing. All right, let's do it. All right. Wow, it looks like you guys had a lot of fun there. And of course, those roller coasters there. Um, I'm sure there were more surprise faces because, well, I know there are, because check these out here. We've got some more of those images from the, uh, from the, from the, the local souvenir shop, let's say. <laughs> <laughs> There's no faking. I trust, I've never seen myself look like that. I'm dying laughing. Kristen, hair advert. <laughs> I was really impressed. She did not want to do it, but she was fantastic. I was peer pressured. I was peer pressured into all of this. But I will say it's so funny. We're sitting at the takeoff for the final ride. It's that yellow hang glider ride. And you can't see the coaster until you're actually on it and out the door. So they open the garage and I see all the twists and the turns and I go, wait, wait, I want to stop, I want to stop. And the gentleman who's running the coaster behind the glass just smiles, hits the button and you're off. So that's where we were at. I'm glad we didn't have audio on because I probably would have had to be censored. It was a wild ride, guys. Well, it seems like it was already edited and all, and, uh, all the way through that anyway. No screens allowed. <laughs> but uh, uh, anyway, Grant, we can just see the FMX guys are on show behind us now. We've just seen the 65 and 85 CC riders. and. Uh, uh, but we'll be back in just a few moments with uh, more from uh, WSX here, the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. What does it take to be a Supercross rider? The short answer is everything. From immense sacrifice growing up to unwavering determination in the pro ranks. Becoming a Supercross athlete requires that the rider dedicate their life to the craft. Otherwise, the dream is fruitless. Supercross is a sport of immense complexity and habituation through repetition is necessary. Lap after lap, the rider familiarizes themselves with the pinpoint accuracy of the sport, programming their brains to understand the assignment and their bodies to carry out what's required to be a successful Supercross athlete. Becoming a Supercross athlete is not for the faint of heart. However, the rewards are worth the sacrifice. With the level of elation of being successful at such a task unrivaled in a lot of other disciplines. A range of techniques are adapted into Supercross racing, which creates versatile and well-rounded riders to combat all terrains, jump sizes, corners, and whoop sections. They say, jump for show, corner for dough. The reality is, in modern day Supercross, airtime is now considered almost as much a contributor to the lap time as cornering. With techniques such as soaking and scrubbing, designed to return the wheels to the ground faster. Conversely, techniques such as the seat bounce are designed for added height and distance. The additional body weight compressing the shock and unloading on the up ramp. This technique can be especially beneficial when immediately exiting a corner or when an obstacle requires additional height and distance. The rear brake tap is another specific in-air technique where the rider engages the clutch, then steps on their rear brake, which snaps the rear wheel to a halt. This action disrupts the trajectory of the motorcycle, bringing the front end down, which may be especially important 
on jumps that require the seat bounce. Cornering is where the real time is made up. With entry, mid, and corner exit speed, all considered separate components to the hole. It's important that the rider look to where they would like to go and be in tune with their throttle, clutch, and brake as they look to maintain their lean angle from their momentum that they're carrying. Corners can vary from ruts to sweepers, with each utilizing a specific technique. Oh! The whoop section is regarded as one of the most challenging parts of a supercross circuit, with riders required to completely commit to staying on top if they blitz, ensuring they hit each one with their front wheel. Jumping has become commonplace in recent years, and riders will make the decision between blitzing and jumping based on spacing and degradation as to which strategy they employ. World-class supercross collects the very best athletes across the world. And in order to make it in this sport, it's pivotal that a rider arrive and continue to hone their technique to keep up with the demands of the machines and the obstacles. Opened in 2013, Yes for the World Abu Dhabi, located on Yes Island, is home to 45 rides, slides and attractions and a diversity of seasonal events and shows. The water park includes six rides that can't be found anywhere else in the world. And the conception of engineering of this Emirati fantasy theme water park was built on the narrative of the legend of the Lost Pearl, which is inspired by Emirati culture and history and is obvious in the water park's architecture, attractions and thrills. Its pearl is seen from outside the water park and all the characters, attractions, shops and restaurants are also based on the story. And uh, here we are down there with the the little mini-me's and mini-them's and stuff, and uh, these riders from uh, all over the place, uh, we've got, what, a handful of 65cc riders, we've got some 85cc riders in there as well. I think they had a sighting lap earlier, or they were getting ready to go out before the freestyle session. But this is a four-lap race for them, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to uh, identify some of these guys. But Grant Langston, uh, a short while ago, we mentioned what a great opportunity it is for these riders to be on this track in front of uh, a crowd like this in Abu Dhabi. No doubt. Uh, for these kids, it's something life-changing. Uh, they've never done something like this. Sure, they've ridden on a track of jumps, but in front of a crowd with the lights and the pressure, you know they're going to be uh, you know, a little tense, a little nervous, make mistakes, but this is what it's all about. And if you notice, there's actually three Petersons in this race, a lot of South Africans that have immigrated to this part of the world. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, the rider who leads at the moment is uh, Cesar Moreau, but uh, Chad Reed is down on the track. And obviously, Chad, you and I and Grant were all kids once, but did you ever have an opportunity like this to do something like this at this age, at this level? I was unbelievably lucky as a child growing up in Australia. Uh, I got to do this at 12 years old, and I'm having a serious dad moment right now because I get on a plane tonight to fly back to Australia to do this exact experience for the first time with Tate next weekend in Australia. So at 13 years old, he's going to get to race his first Supercross and walking the track with these guys this, you know, earlier today was so awesome to just vibe off of them. And I'm so proud of these kids out here getting to rip around on Supercross. And of course, you are doing the complete that experience as well, because uh, aren't you going back to rebuild bikes as well? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dad slash mechanic slash coach. Um, but yeah, you know, like when you look at the effort that Tate and I put in over the last six weeks and these kids have never had access to what my kid has and I just, I'm so proud of them. I think it's so cool to see. I just seen a kid go double, double, double out of the first turn and that's really impressive. In terms of this kind of experience, you said you did it at 12 years old. What kind of environment was it? Was it like an arena like this, uh, a circuit as technical as this, or was it just kind of outdoor super cross tracks that you experienced th those first times back as a, as a kid? Yeah, no, exactly like this. So uh, that, that's, that's why we uh, started the CR22 Cup this year in Australia. We brought it back after about 15 years. Um, so yeah, we got to race with the professionals just like these guys are on the real track, real jumps, real size, everything. And uh, you know, I think that the you know, my own Supercross results speak for themselves on 
you know, how lucky I was to do that at 12 years old. And of course, coming into an arena like this with this type of track, not easy, is it? And of course, I'm sure nerves can get the better of the riders if they're not careful. Um, these guys look they're doing, they look like they're doing a good job. They really are, you know, I mean, like, it's my understanding from the, the small talk that I had with them is that for the most part, they just ride in the desert in, in sand. And, you know, as we know, as motorcycle riders, this Supercross track is far different than anything that they've ever experienced in their life. And I just can't say how much I'm impressed for them to ride around and even see some of them doing the jumps. All right, well, look, uh, Chad Reed down there on the track, thank you for your experience. And of course, thanks for reliving yeah. some of those uh, childhood memories. So riders then making their way over the line. The track is done and dusted. And uh, some of these guys, a typical commentator's curse, wasn't it, of course? Uh, everyone doing a good job. Next shot, guy on the floor, biting his tongue. He, he's all right. Uh, he was waving at the fans. So France has the Louvre, and so too does Abu Dhabi. Described as France's largest cultural project abroad, the Louvre Abu Dhabi is the largest art museum in the Arabian Peninsula and the most visited museum in the Arab world. Artworks from around the world are showcased here with stated intent to bridge the gap between Eastern and Western art. Riders down there on the grid then, Grant Langston. And again, very interesting gate choices here. We've got a little bit of time to fill here. Well, look at the screen. Bottom left side, number one, Ken Roxon. He's behind Mossy. Uh, I mean, unreal. Points leader, championship leader, defending champion, back row. He's stuck there the whole night. He's going to have to find a way to thread the needle because <laughs> all the rivals that he wants to beat are in front of him. Yeah, well, the Super Pole, which was the first three from the heat races. So yeah. SX, uh, WSX, uh, Heat 1 and Heat 2. The top three went through to the Super Final, of course. Matt Moss had that super fast time. He goes to the line on pole and gains a, uh, a World Championship point as a result yeah. of that. But with Kenny Roxon having that bad start, the combination of the positions between the two groups and everything else, he goes to the line in 13th place. And actually, when they decided to settle the grid before we came on air live, these riders, by the way, they are all going to be, you know, parked in these positions the whole time. So, Roxon decided, you know what, I'm going to go behind Matt Moss. You know why? Because he's a fast starter. And if he can get away, I can get away with him. And that's what he's banking on in these races tonight. I feel like saying he's living on a wish and a prayer because no one wants to be on the back row. He's trying to figure out how do I squeeze through. And if you look at how a lot of starts are, it becomes like an arrowhead. So, if you're in the middle, and you're behind, you can thread the needle. That's what he's hoping, but it doesn't always work out that way. Other well, riders that had great rides and obviously made it to Super Bowl uh, to give themselves a shot. Dean Wilson, Joey Sabacci, Justin Brayton, Vince Freezy, and Mitchell Oldenburg. Oldenburg's riding very good at the moment. Yeah, he looks very comfortable in that 450. Um, made a great transition, but man, the speed of Matt Moss earlier just blew my mind. We didn't see that one. Well, I didn't see it coming. And uh, But again, we're going to start do it all over this is main event time so the sighting lap complete then for wsx riders they're getting ready for their first world championship race this evening here at the abu dabu grand prix and um justin brayton there another rider who made it to the super bowl he's going to go to the grid in fourth place and i'm just wondering if we just have time just to just to vocalize the the top 10 so going to the line first matt moss from Dean Wilson, Joey Savacci, Justin Brayton, Vince Friese, and Mitchell Oldenburg going to line six, ahead of Phil Nicoletti, who's seventh, Gregory Aranda eight, Cedric Subaras nine, and Colt Nichols ten. And we've already mentioned it, Ken Roxon, the championship leader coming in here on the PMG uh, Progressive Insurance Suzuki. 
is uh, going to be starting from 13th on the grid and second row. All right, we're on board with Dean Wilson over the finish line into this left hander. The whoops, they're changing all night. Get a good Dino, good through the whoops with that good speed. Gets the tightens up. Double, single to the inside. In front of him is Colt Nichols. Taking different options outside. They have to adjust to the light. Left hander. This has changed a little bit. They redesigned that chicane back to the arena. Jump in. Now they go triple, triple. Then you make a hard left to see the ruts developing, making this triple a little more technical. And then this tightening right hander into what is now the finish line. That pretty much is a lap at Abu Dhabi. Ken Proxen, the championship leader coming into here and let's take a look at the points coming into the second round here the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix and uh, Ken Roxon on 69 for PMG Progressive Suzuki and uh, Joey Savacci just seven behind him with Breezy nine behind his uh, fellow American then we've got Hill, Wilson, Chisholm, Brayton, Nichols, Aranda, Morans and Josh Hill there on 32 and you can see that double stack start we spoke about that at the top of the broadcast and on that start list these Matt Moss, the first six riders obviously rejig their position because of their super pole laps. Matt Moss will be starting from pole, and where he starts next to the doghouse is his chosen position for the entire night. 13th place for Ken Rocks, and he's chosen to start behind Matt Moss throughout the evening. And so it's going to be very interesting to see how that pans out. There is the number one. He's only got a seven point advantage over Savacci. Savacci starting on the front row. Grant Langston. Yeah, this is going to be really technical. I mean, I tell you what, Ken Roxon's got a long night ahead of it. Three main events from the back row. This is where you're going to see the cream rise at the top. He's going to have to be aggressive, but passively aggressive at the same time. The SX2 races were eight laps. These SX WSX races are 11 laps, so three laps longer on 450 machines. A tight racetrack awaits. Oh, Keep your eyes on the number one there. Ken Roxon, a slow reaction oh, yeah. because he couldn't go too early because he would have ran into the back of Moss. But it's Freezy up the inside. Oh, and three. Roxon, he got, he got bogged down because of that crash right at the first turn. Morans, it was, who went down. And we've got Carnage there through the uh, triple oh. section as well. So we've got riders down, two bikes in there. So I wonder if Breaks this will down. get... Uh, we, got, we got a lot of carnage. Just wondering oh. if they can get out of the way in time there. Hill is one of them on the 75. Maybe uh, Aaron Tanti on the 9. We've got Wade Yellow is going to be as they emerge back into the arena. But uh, another rider down there as well. And that is the 10 of Justin Brayton. Wow, so Brayton's pinned on the bike there. And uh, oh. can't the number. Where's the uh, Wade Jellos here coming into the arena? Well, there they are. Yeah. All of a sudden, everybody's got to go wheels on the ground. There's a medical flag midway through. Yeah, there was jumping through there, so might be some penalties, but... Uh, but it's Freezy who leads. So for some reason, we've got Josh Hill showing up as leading on our time in scoring, but it's uh, Freezy who leads. 15, Wilson in second place. The 102 of Matt Moss in third, Savachi in fourth. The 85 of Subaras is in fifth place. And then Aranda, but uh, a problem for Savachi is he went out of the tunnel, losing a position. So a tough night for Justin Brayton. Brayton coming here, seventh in the championship. Had a difficult night with a fifth, eighth and ninth in Birmingham at the opening round, the British Grand Prix. He was hoping to make some amends here, but uh, a tough night there for Aaron Tanti on the number nine on the CDR Yamaha. Yeah, just unreal. Um, Bar banging going on here, changing positions. Wilson all over the back of Vince Freezy. There's Freezy hanging on to that lead. Remember, he started here seven points behind. Great and crossing the track there as the riders enter the arena. And uh, Freezy just keeping an eye on there, and that cost Wilson a, a position. And Matt Moss goes through, capitalises, moves into second place. A cheeky move that from the Australian on the Scott. And Moss Leb makes a mistake, he stalls. And redemption then for Wilson, who moves back into second place. And Moss can't get that machine fired back up, so the 102 FXR Club MX Yamaha rider 
goes from second right to the back, and that whole position amounting to nothing. Brent yeah. Manson. So unfortunate. Um, you know, there were many horses through the Red Cross area supposed to do, and some riders not really following the rules. Uh, I don't know what they're going to do afterwards, but that made a, a move there on Dino. Uh, but it, it was after the incident. Good recovery this for Kenny Roxon. He's uh, up in two ways. He just makes a mistake there, did he? Oh, he gets good drive, but then there's uh, Wave Jellos there. As, uh, is that Moss just parked up on the right side, or is yeah. that? Couldn't Off quite see there. Again. But anyway, Roxon moving swiftly through the field on that number one PMG, Risk Insurance Suzuki. He knows he's got Mitch Freezy ahead of him, one hole straight away. Coming out of uh, the penultimate turn into the final turn, but it's Freezy who still leads. We are on lap six of 11. Freezy slowed things down there in that turn. Here comes Whoa, Roxon. Dino to the outside. But of course, just at the end of the whoops, but uh, here Ken's, here's Ken Roxon. And behind him, the battle for the lead. Ahead of him, further up track as Roxon, uh, sorry, as Wilson tries to get aggressive with Freezy, who's on the brakes and just controlling the pace here right at the front. And that is bringing in Gregory Aranda in third on the number 20 machine for GSM Yamaha HBI Group. Well, I'm just going to cut to the chase. Dean Wilson does not like Vince Freezy, and he's waiting for his time. But the problem is Dino is going to have to get aggressive. He's going to he have to move Freeze, Freeze bobbles in now Dino goes to the outside can he get around this and get to it oh he squares it up could not do it and like you said Aranda he's just waiting and look at that rocks it now up to fourth place I've said it before but the cream always rises to the top and that man is coming is oh, oh Aranda comes up short goes out of fourth place that was a hard hit for the Frenchman Man. These riders are falling like flies in this yeah. first race of the evening. Well, this track is deteriorating. Look at Wilson. He's got to the inside. He yeah. gets it. He makes it stick at the end of the straight. Wilson now leads on lap eight. But look at Roxon. This this would be an unbelievable win if Roxon could come from behind. Wave Jello's there. Who is that on the entrance to the arena? That's uh, 49, Colt I think. That's 45, Colt Nichols. Colt 45. Goes oh! Down. Oh! oh. down the inside. And Freezy doing what Freezy does. And Wilson, well, I tell you what, he's going to be uh, he's fuming. Absolutely. He's fuming under that helmet. These guys have had multiple issues. And Ken Roxon just going, thank you, thank you, thank you. And Roxon, he knows now what he's up against. Freezy knows that there's a rider there. I'm not sure if he saw a flash of yellow front fender at the end of the whip section there. But if he's not done it by the end of this lap, It'll be this halfway through the next lap at the end of the whoop section of that. You can almost be sure. Lap oh. nine almost coming to an end. Kenny flying oh. through that section is so good. He had a check up. They almost ran into freeze. But um, Kenny and then Suzuki are able to just turn those tight turns. Suzuki has that tight front end and enables you to corner tighter. Going to set himself up here. He needs to get on the fat part of the tire pretty quickly. But he gets alongside. He's going to have to lean on him oh. here. Freezy doesn't give him the opportunity. Roxon getting frustrated, but he knows he's ahead. Kenny now got to reset. Watch, watch Kenny for you. Look, double, square it up, square it up. Stay out of those deep runs, get really close. Kenny can, can bonsai Stay if he had to. He stays a lot lower there as well as he yeah. goes triple, triple, but Freezy checks him up again into that left-hander. Freezy can hear out of his ears where they're at, so he knows. And he heard Kenny on that side, he cut him off. Freeze really good at defending. Roxon yeah. probably getting frustrated at this point. Again, gets the drive, just can't make the pass happen. Tries to go outside, inside. And will he try again here? Not, well, if he can, we saw Makarath in the heat race earlier try something there. We've seen passes made there, oh, but a mistake. mistake. Well, can he have a chance now? Freeze is smart, blocks the inside. Ken has to go to the outside, he's got to square it up. Can't do much. Final lap, coming into the final turn. Kenny makes a move, oh! spins down, and he he's there as he injured his shoulder. Uh -oh. I think he may have landed awkwardly on the shoulder as he came through. And Kenny Roxon, oh, his uh -oh. ankle, or his no knee maybe. Way. So Kenny Roxon goes down and out of a chance of that uh, lead. Watch this here. He has him set up in his sights. He had the intention, but the shiny stuff. He took. Did he clip the rear tire? He was so close. I'd love to actually. 
wasn't sure if and he's still not crossed the line yet so uh, Kenny Roxon shaking his head there and I don't know if Kenny Roxon is going to be out for the rest of the evening or uh, certainly the next race because it's going to be a back-to-back -back race Kenny Roxon crosses the line in a disappointing 14th place was not expecting that we saw his intention he set it up jump to the right it will took the outside then was going to square it up and try and bonsai freezy in that last corner but again the shiny line you can see on the triple jump take a look at the results then vince freezy wins it somehow hangs on by the skin of his teeth savachi second Subaras third oldenburg ramet ran out the top five and wilson hill clayson nicoletti and moran's your top 10 and then the rest of the guys there but uh, ken roxon 14 for him and with freezy winning he is now going to be the new championship leader let's go down to Kristen. vince with ken roxon all over you was that more physically or mentally demanding yeah that was that was tough man those guys are pushing and you can't open up and ride the fast lines or you get passed so you, you got to protect and it makes it tricky so um yeah these guys led for dean led for a second and he, he saw how tough it is so uh, it's going to be a fun couple motos here. Vince, thank you so much. Now, while these guys are cooling down, I'm looking at the scoreboard inside the arena and an update on some of the riders who fell out of that GP race. I was able to check in with the medical staff on Justin Brayton and on Aaron Tanti. They were both alert. They will likely not return to this second WSX GP race. However, I did check in with Matt Moss and with... Um, two of the other riders who fell out Gregory Aranda in that race as well and both of them had told me they are back on the line they are ready to go but guys just absolute chaos in that second WS GP race and the riders pull themselves down then let's take a look and recap of these race highlights Kenny Roxon already at the back but there was drama already out of the first turn into the first rhythm section as uh, Fitz Freezy led the way riders crashing out down there Aaron Tanti Justin Brayton one or two others but Freezy led the way. Yes, he did. And, uh, his good friend Dean Wilson was behind him, tried to make the pass. Dino would eventually get around Freeze, who had a good, pretty good pace. You see the red cross flag means you have to roll every jump. Roxon buried in the pack, trying to come through. And he was doing such a good job of it. And then here, yeah, you see Wilson has a go, keeps it clean. And then eventually he's able to get the drive right oh aranda from third yeah unfortunate just tagged they deliberately tagged that jump but oh dino took the lead and freeze just hit him pretty hard kenny going for the win yeah. watch this last lap oh just clips the bank on that corner washes out So riders behind the gate looks like Ken Roxon is trying to brave it out but you can see him very very uh, uncomfortable there I can see Kristen waiting in the wings hopefully she can grab a word with him at some point but uh, just let him get himself nice and cool at the moment but a very interesting start position we know that the double stack it was always going to be interesting the number ones of McElrath in the SX2 class and Roxon not having a great night here or not having a great Abu Dhabi Grand Prix and uh, they have a lot of work to do and it's not going to be easy for Ken Roxon now especially with what looks like a knee or an ankle injury yeah he definitely looks like he's struggling for sure obviously but uh, he was just trying to go for the win and uh, unfortunate obviously in hindsight's really easy to say he should have just finished second whatever but he went for it um might have caught his foot turned it that's what i think but the reason he went for it is because freezy is seven points behind him in the championship if if he uh, allows freezy that win all of a sudden that gaps down to four with two races still to run here today and around in uh, what two three weeks time in melbourne australia yeah no doubt i mean for sure. I mean, but races, you, come on, Paul, you will want to. Yeah. You want to win when you can. If it's there and it's he a final set it turn up. pass, it's even more satisfying. He had set it up. The only difference was, as we talked, the front just washed. 
heard it from all the writers. We can't pass it. We just saw it. Not only from Ken Lobster, but Joey Savanchi. He passed all the writers as well. If you know where to make these opportunities happen, Getting ready for the second WSX final here at the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. And uh, Chad Reed is down on the floor for us. Uh, Chad Reed, what do you make of that race? To the top of his foot, so it's kind of like ankle area. So it'll be interesting to see how he rides in this one. Well, we just missed the, uh, the first part of that, but uh, sometimes like a top of his foot, ankle area. But we are hearing that maybe a penalty for Vince Friese, the winner from race one for dangerous riding. So whether that was jumping on those wave yellows and medicals as he came back through into the arena. So uh, a lot of drama here in Abu Dhabi and uh, certainly things being thrown to the wall here and a uh, cat amongst the pigeons, definitely. Yeah, I mean, no doubt, be curious to know what exactly the penalty was for. Uh, like you said, was, was, it that, was it that actual incident with Wilson? Was there something else? We'll find out. So everybody there lined up, getting ready for the 32nd board to come on through here. As, uh, and it might have, and that, actually we're hearing Freezy might have got penalized for what he did to Dean Wilson when he slammed him down the inside to regain the lead. So Freezy in the bad books. Look at an advantage here, though, from uh, Hill. No rider in front of him in that second gate, which would have been... Uh, actually, who would that have been, actually, on that second row? Because uh, that is a massive advantage. Yeah. Number 10, great. So great all of a sudden, now, yeah. Hill has a... Uh, Josh Hill has a, a good run at a gate drop there. But he can't go until the gate drops. Exactly. So he's still behind, but as you alluded to, clear path he can select a line move. So this is this is the incident that caused the penalty. You make up your minds, folks. That was the incident. This is race two. And charging into that first turn, Sabachi with a better start. Matt Moss in the middle. And uh, alongside him, the 20 of Aranda. So Aranda's picked himself up and he's uh, right there in fourth, fifth position as Wilson goes through and takes a position away from him. Keep your eye on the second and third place rider. Freezy in second, Wilson in third. You know payback's coming. Oh, and Freeze just slams. 17, Sabachi. So, so now, <laughs> Freeze <laughs> should be sponsored by Target because he's got a huge one on his back. Roxon just uh, coming up into a bit of a temporary halt there in that tight right hander a moment ago, but it's Freeze who leads once again. And Wilson right there in second. Bad case of deja vu between these two. Don't and take uh, your eyes on that. Watch Wilson. this. Oh, he tagged that jump. Otherwise, he was going to repay you that favor. Sabachi there in third place. And then uh, just behind them, Moss, but, uh, or it was Moss. It's Oldenburg now up in the fourth place. Then Aranda on the 20, Roxon in six, Moss seven, Chisholm eight, Subaras nine, Josh Hill ten. Again, these two playing fun and games with each other. And Freezy just let radar underneath that helmet of his. Oh, here we go, payback. Gave him a good dig in the ribs, but nothing came of it. Freezy still leads and slowing everything up. Look. Oh yeah, he's, uh, he's, oh! Making, oh, he's making the point. And uh, well, the problem is behind Freezy, he's got Wilson, who's furious. He's got Sabachi, who just slammed. So no allies to speak of. Even though Dean Wilson is also on a Honda, that means zero right now. Oh, Wilson gets a drive. What's going to happen? Freeze trying to close the line. Oh! oh! And Sabachi had a problem there. Did he get slammed by Wilson oh, and off the track? Sabachi hit into freeze so don't take you out of that battle so thinking about the battle of the championship obviously Roxon came here with a seven point advantage over Savacci with Freeze nine points behind and Freeze and Savacci obviously Freezy under review at the moment for race one Savacci coming up second it's going to be Savacci leading the way in the championship chase right now with Roxon's results as they were and he just needs to be patient yeah and, and stay calm and Joey knows that too he has a replay, so same turn where Freeze smashed Wilson. Wilson tries to, but you can tell because of the rut, he couldn't just drive it in there. The front tucked a little bit. Good ride this from Ken Roxon. He's in fifth. He's riding through the wow. main barrier. This is impressive. This is why Kenny's done what he's been able to do over the years. He just finds a way to make it happen. 
and even when you think he's out of it, all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute, he's right there. Mitchell Oldenburg under pressure from Ken Roxon. Oldenburg riding very, very accomplished on that 450 here this weekend. Remember, he didn't ride the 450 class last time out at the British Grand Prix. And he gets wow. undone there by Ken Roxon. So Roxon flies by, mails around the, the turn around the outside and moves up into fourth place with that pass on Mitchell Oldenburg. Kenny just doing what he does, make the most out of any situation. And he's not done. This time, he's going to move forward. He's got Sabachi in his sights. And the leaders are also just in front of Sabachi. So if the, if the, the leaders play a little cat and mouse, this, this race is wide open. Here is Dean Wilson. He leads by about 1.6 seconds over Freezy with Sabachi third. Roxon about another uh, two seconds further back there. In fact, not even that now yeah. because he's right there with Oldenburg just behind him. We're at the halfway point of the race, just over the halfway point in this race. And Roxon proving what a, a champion he is. Don't, remember, don't forget, uh, MX2 World Champion, he's won uh, 250 Supercross Championship. He's won Outdoors in America as well. He's the reigning FIM World Supercross Champion. And he's there for a reason oh. as Oldenburg loses the front as well, just like Kenny did at the end of that first heat race. It's getting slick. I mean, if you go look at that turn, it's shiny, it's polished. Wow, Ken gets a good drive. The thing with Kenny is he does not like, he, he doesn't like the slam guys to get past them. And I think with Tabachi, they get along quite well. So he's got to pick a spot, but... But they are rivals in this championship no chase. Doubt. And actually, when you're 100% healthy, you are sometimes under pressure a little bit to perform to make that start, especially when you're starting on the second row. He had that crash. That might have done Kent Roxon a favor because now he feels the pressure is off. And we're seeing that. He's just riding around. He looks like he's on a Sunday afternoon training ride at the moment as he blows by <laughs> Sabachi in the whoops once again and moves up into third place. Great ride this from Roxon. That's unreal. I mean, from the elevated camera view, you don't realize how gnarly those whoops are. And anyone that's ridden on a Supercross track, they are daunting, they're intimidating, and can just grab a handful between his technique, bike setup. Got it done. Deja vu here for these two then. But Wilson is who leads, Freezy seconds, and uh, Roxon now third. I don't know if Kenny's close enough, but watch the whoop speed come up. Well, we'll soon find out. I think it was a couple oh. of bike lengths away, a little kick there. But if he can get close next lap, I think Kenny can get past Freezy. And that's going to be huge for the points. Steal some back. Yeah, nine laps. We're on lap line of 11 here in this second WSX final. One more to go after this a little later on in the evening. But Dean Wilson, redemption after being taken out by Freezy. When he led, he could have been a possible two-time race winner potentially coming into this, uh, heading into the race three later on. We've still got another lap and a bit to go. But Roxon, still not close enough to do anything about Vince Freezy, the number three on the Motor Concepts Honda. But he's getting closer. I was going to say, he's close enough now that he's setting up this last lap pass, I believe. He's going to he's gonna get as close as he can. And either, I mean, he might decide to block pass the freeze before the whoops. But again, right there, coming back into the stadium, he loses a couple of bike lengths every time, and it hurts him. He's got to get closer. He has this chance. Coming but he's up. not close enough in the whoops at this moment as we are on the final lap, although he is right there now, and he does get good drive. Maybe he's measured it to perfection. He shows him a oh. wheel, but he's not able to execute. This corner coming out of... Uh, this sort of, not the left, the right-hander as we go yeah. back into the arena. There's a lot of movement, polish and hard edges there. That clay dirt now, look at it. Yeah, he's, he's got to get closer if he wants to have any chance. Dean but he's Wilson. not close enough. But Dino, start of the day, fifth overall. With a sixth, a fifth and a third, he wins race two here in Abu Dhabi. From Vince Freezy and Ken Roxon. Great ride that from the Scott. And uh, his first win of the season in this championship. Good job, Dino. Savacci fourth, Aranda fifth, Subaras, Nicoletti, Hill, Oldenburg, and Matt Moss rounding out the top ten. We'll give you those results officially as soon as we can. So Dean Wilson wins for the first time this year. He wins race two here in Abu Dhabi, followed home by Freezy, Roxon, Savacci, Aranda, and the rest you can see there on screen. But a uh, great ride from Roxon after that first race fall. Let's go down to Kristen. She is with Dean Wilson.
Dean, I have to ask you about it. Is the debt paid? Yeah, no, it's not. Um, that was good racing though. How you guys like it? There we go. Yeah, obviously that first mole was a disappointment. Um, I thought I had a little bit more of a gap on him than I did. Left the door completely open. When Vince is behind you, you know he's going to clean you out. He's a dirty rider. Brake checking us in the tunnel and just, he wants to win though, and I can respect that, but the brake checking and all that is just no need for it. Was, we were riding two miles an hour in the back. It's, it, was, it was actually pretty crazy. I've never experienced something like that. But hey, we got the second mode win. First mode score is kind of screwed, but um, it's what it is. Hope you guys are enjoying your night and the racing, and uh, one more mode, let's go. Dean Wilson, guys. Take a look at the highlights then from what was another fascinating and explosive WSX race two here. Joseph Vacci with the whole shot this time. Moss alongside him. Aranda there in third after what was a big crash in race one. But these two going at it again. Freezy and Wilson fighting over the lead as they were last time around. Grant Langston. Yeah, I mean, Dino just trying to, you know, get back at him, send a message. But Ken Roxon didn't know if he was even going to ride. All of a sudden, he doesn't just ride. He rides phenomenal. Yeah, Comes from back row, moving forward, and great result there for him. Oldenburg fell, he lost the front. He was in, what, fourth place at the time. He'd just been passed by Roxon. Roxon then got a bit of a surge on and uh, got close to Vince Friese, but wasn't able to find a way through despite his uh, more superior whoop speed. But it was Dean Wilson who was denied a possible win in race one who crossed the line to win race two from Friese and Roxon. Take a look at the points then as we have them. Um, so far, Savacci, Roxon, Freezy, Wilson, and Hill. Something on bike setup because a lot of the riders went and lowered the front end. Getting ready for the final SX2 race of the evening here in Abu Dhabi. The Abu Dhabi Grand Prix at the Etihad Arena in Abu Dhabi with me, Paul Malin, and Grant Langston. And of course, it's the third and final race. Here's how the riders line up with Wilson Todd on pole ahead of Luke Clout, Max Anstey, Chris Bloss, and Cole Thompson. Anstey, the winner of the last heat, heat two. Chris Bloss, the winner of race one. So uh, it's going to be maybe one or two fireworks between those guys there, potentially, as they chase the overall victory here in Abu Dhabi. Yeah. Big deal for all these guys and all to play for right now. All right, let's go down to Kristen. Here she is. One of the adjustments teams have been kind of playing with throughout the day to get better turning from the bike, either lowering the front end or raising the rear end. Now, the downside to that, you're kind of robbing Peter to pay Paul because when you change the geometry of the bike, it gets really unstable in the whoop section. So that's something to follow throughout this race, guys. Yeah, good point there, Kristen. Um, 
But again, there's more corners than there are whoops. Let's see where that happens. Double stack start for the third and final time here. Essex to race three. Anstey to the inside. Rubs his teammate nicely down the inside there. Wilson top, but it is Chris Blosier, winner from race one, who has the lead from Anstey. A direct shootout between the two race winners here so far this evening. And in third place, Maxim Dupre. He has been on fire so far this evening. Good starts for the Frenchman as uh, Todd gets shuffled back to fourth. And just way back is your points, well, probably last points leader, the number one of Shane McElrath. Sorry, yeah. friend, the needle did not work out for him. Yeah, it looks like he's down around about 15th position. Hasn't been his day or night here so far this weekend in Abu Dhabi. But Chris Blos leads as we burst back into the arena, the Etihad Arena in Abu Dhabi. But he is hounded at the moment by number 99, Max Anstey. Maxim Dupre is in third, Wilson top four, Luke Nice, a great start for him in fifth place, ahead of Anthony Bourdon on the Bud Racing Kawasaki, Luke Clout, Colin Park, Jace Owen, Adrian Escoffier running out the top ten. must say, really impressed with Chris Flows, you know, he's a veteran of the sport in his twilight years, but right now, this evening, this is Max Anstey's opportunity to really take a stranglehold of the championship. Obviously, McElrath then and leading, defending champion, Anstey a few points down. He's made the most of it. Can he finish off with the win and the overall for the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix? Oh, oh. a little mistake there from Blows. Lights the up the back end. That's perfect drive for Anstey. He gets himself right, in, right into contention. Oh. Got to be careful there. There was a wave yellow, but I kind of... I'm going to go with, I think it was on the wrong side of the track for that tight hairpin. We'll see what the officials say, but... Anstey leads though on lap three. Remember, he needs to win this one, I think, to take the overall for sure, because uh, when Blos won race one, Anstey was third. And then, obviously, uh, the second one, the results were a little bit out of skew, but it was Anstey who was second. I don't believe Blos was there in that second or third place. So, at some point, hopefully, we'll get some uh, live championship results or overall results on screen if we can, but uh, Blos now under pressure from the 141. So the Nils Honda under pressure from Dupre. The GSM Yamaha HBI group rider looks like he could potentially still finish on the podium even after a difficult race earlier on in the night. Yeah, Dupre is really fantastic tonight. And uh, well, if he gets around Blos, that will help him the overall lot. Yeah, one of the two interesting places on the racetrack, of course, and uh, one of those that came out on the uh, outside of the racetrack. But uh, Max Anstey is trying to pull away. He's about a second and a half clear of Blos at the moment with Dupre there. Still trying to, way, trying to find a way through. Let's go down to Briston. She has some information for us. As Chris Blos and Max Anstey just worked their way through the chicane, I had a chance to run over and check out that section. They are down to the board, so they are limited on traction there. I will not be surprised if riders start changing up their race lines in that section, guys. Yeah, it's been a very interesting part of the racetrack since we got here. And make an interesting move. Oh. Dupre up to second. That's going to do Anstey a favor. And it's also going to help Dupre's course to finish on the podium potentially this evening. What a beautiful move. Clean as a whistle. Nice block pass, no contact. You don't see that very much this evening. So Anstey out on his own. That's the gap. He's leaving the uh, outdoors back into the arena. And then you see Dupre and Blos. But what a fantastic ride we've had here this weekend from Dupre. He started six over on a championship because uh, Enzo Lopez, Mitch Oldenburg and Carl Peters, third, fourth and fifth, finished ahead of him. But they're not here this weekend. Uh, Oldenburg riding in the, uh, the other class, in the premier class. The other two riders not making it here this weekend. But, of course... With the results that he had last time out, Maxim Dupre is uh, on a bit of a winner here. 11th, 5th and 15th, sorry, uh, yeah, 10th and 7th and 5th for Dupre last time out. But here he is, knocking on the door for that podium. Well, Max Anstey, just been, he's been there on it all weekend. Smooth, Riding smooth as well. Comfortable, but again, you get a good qualifying. You put yourself on a good grid spot. You get good stars. You get out front. And now he finds himself, as long as he finishes where he is, he'll have a nice little points lead in the World Championship. And I'm sure coming to this event, he would have said, that was my goal or my dream. Oh, Todd made a little mistake, come out of the whoops. This was the fray on close. Yeah, watch the it. final turn. Yeah, just beautifully executed. 
that's how you do it. You take the line away, rips the tear off, takes the inside the next turn, and moves on. Clean as a whistle, as you said. So Anstey then, starting lap nine, his gap is four seconds over Maxim Dupre. Los still there in third place at the moment. Fourth is Wilson Todd. He looked like he had an issue a lap or so ago. Maybe just had a bit of a bubble through one of the turns and lost his footing, something like that. But he's still hanging on in that fourth place. Had a loop. Nice. What a great ride for Nice. The 125 on the FXR Club MX machine who went 2017-17 last time out. The British Grand Prix. Maybe it was all due to him. But uh, he's certainly making up for that here in this third final race. Much better evening for Nice. He's, he's been solid all three finals. Kind of like Anstey, but maybe he'll find himself on the podium. Lap 10, working its way to a, a conclusion here. Goes over the 3-5-3. Working his way behind Mike Alessi, the number 800 on the MCR Honda. Well, Mike Alessi has... down in 18th place. Yeah, Mike Alessi's been around a long time. Had a chat with him earlier. I said, are you still doing this? And he said... I'm coming up my 20th season, and he said, so I'm probably going to retire next year, but he's had a great run. Yeah, ran it out nicely. There's Carl Webster, so the ninth. Uh, sorry, uh, that's Anstey. We saw Webster a moment ago, but Anstey making light work of the whoops. Pleased with that win, it win in race two, but then he's going to go back-to-back -back wins here on the night. It'll be his third win of the season because he went 2-1-2 two, two in yeah. Birmingham for second overall. He started the weekend. Third, uh, three points behind uh, McElrath in the points chase. That's going to be pulling a full 180 after tonight's results. Well, more importantly, it's a massive night for the point standings. And at the end of the day, we, we talk about each weekend's a battle, but at the end of the day, you want to win the war, which is being world champion. And I know Max Anstey wants that so bad, but he's ridden tonight with class, confidence, just doing what he does and all of a sudden he finds himself in a strong position absolutely and here he is into the arena for the final time we are on lap 12 of 12 the final lap max anstey the firepower froth honda rider out of the final turn a 3-1-1 on the night max anstey wins the abu dhabi grand prix surely he certainly wins race two and race three we know that chris close who was victorious in race one, has to be content with third in race two behind Maxim Dupre, but a great night for Anstey. No doubt about it. Massive as far as the championship goes. He will take the points lead, and I will have to figure out the rest of the podium, but I think Dupre and Blos might be on there with them overall. And McElrath, 11. So, wow, just a rough, rough night for the former points leader. Yeah, Anstey, your winner then from Dupre, Blos, Todd, and Park. Here's the points then for the uh, for the championship, I believe. Anstey McElrath now, look at that. What a point Massive swing that turnaround. is. And then Dupre does move himself up in the third. Take a look at the highlights then of the third and final SX2 race here. Two riders really vying for that overall spot and they were there second uh, first and second in the opening couple of corners there chris blose and anstey the race winners from tonight from race one and two yeah. so it was really between these two but the fray was not letting them out of their sights either on the 141 yamaha no doubt at all but anstey showed his superiority all night long got out front again took the lead and then beautiful pass there from debris that was for second position and then he started to put some distance between himself and blows as anstey opened up more than Five seconds, almost six seconds by the time he reached the checkered flag for win number two of the evening, win number three for the night. So, Anstey, your winner here of the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix.
Welcome back to the World Supercross Championship from Abu Dhabi. I am standing by with your SX2 overall champion on the night, Max Anstey. Max, Grant Langston, our booth commentator, said during that race, you look so smooth. Did it feel that way for you? Um, to be honest, uh, man, it, it was tight. It was, uh, it was hectic. We, uh, we had some moments out there. I mean, every race uh, tonight, whether it's 250s or 450, there's been, uh, there's been carnage. So uh, they definitely did a good job uh, uh, at the entertainment side. It was... Uh, Definitely a little different to race. It was it was super tight, obviously, um, and going against such good good guys, it, it, everything was so close. So I had to try and be smooth and, uh, and execute and hit my marks. But happy to come away with the win. Heightened drama here in Abu Dhabi. Max Anstey leaving here. Also, your overall points leader. Let's send it over to Chad. Place tonight. Chris Blos, uh, I've traveled many races over the world, and you've been at many of them. So this, this when I walked in yesterday to this stadium, I thought it's going to be a Chris Blos weekend. How was it, bud? Yeah, as you know, the track's really tricky tonight. Uh, obviously, some really close racing, and uh, Max and I went into that last main event tied. So um, I just didn't have what it what he had in the whoops, and I didn't want to completely just throw it away uh, over just risking it all. So. We just kind of settled in, completed our laps, and yeah, we're here in second overall. Happy with that. Congrats. We'll see you in a few weeks in Australia. And I have Maxime Despre, who is down here with me now, rounding out the podium, but his first World Supercross Championship podium. Maxime, what made this your night? Yeah, I'm feeling better and better on the bike since uh, Birmingham, and uh, we work really hard with the team. The bike is, is going better and better, so... I took two good starts, I crashed in the second main, so I said, okay, last one, try to, to have a good one, and uh, yeah, I was uh, third, and I uh, passed uh, Chris Blow, so it's two second place, and I'm really happy to, to be on the podium for me, for my team, and uh, yeah, thanks everybody, it was a really cool weekend for me. Well done, heightened drama here in Abu Dhabi, my friends. So let's take a look at how things finish then here with our uh, look at the points. Here in Abu Dhabi, the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix here at the Etihad Arena. I think you've got to agree there's been some fantastic racing here tonight, but uh, Max Anstey, Chris Close, Maxim Dupre coming away with the podium places. Of course, Anstey will be the new championship leader as well after a, a, a night that was, well, one of those nights to forget for Shane McElrath, who arrived here with a three-point advantage over Anstey. Just wasn't his day, Grant Langston. Yeah, just a massive turnaround. I mean, <laughs> it's crazy how the sport works. One weekend, you're on top. Next weekend, you're scratching your head. Anstey's probably going, hey, I was hoping to make up points, maybe take the lead. And Ang's going, whoa, I've got a massive lead going into the next round. So... The Englishman, I don't know, maybe the roller coasters worked out for him because he said, I'm going to start like I did on the roller coaster, <laughs> and then it worked out. He finished like that too. Absolutely. Well, look, we are moments away from this podium then for the uh, SX2 category, round two of World Supercross Championship here at the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. And they're just getting themselves into position down there, getting ready, of course, uh, freshening up. But there you see, podium in position right there just by uh, well just in front of the start line area I believe ladies and gentlemen it's time ladies and gentlemen it's podium time for the FIM World Supercross Championship here in Abu Dhabi presenting the trophies today the CEO of Ithara, Saif Rashid Al Noemi, and FIM representative or delegate Peter Doyle from Australia. And in third place, it is the 141 of Maxim Dupre riding for GSM Yamaha HBI Group. And second place, Chris Blos, number three on the Nils Honda. And representing the championship leading team to receive the red plate, welcome Nathan Alexander from Fire Power Froth Polyphor Honda, team manager. And now your overall round winner, please congratulate the number 99, Max Anstey.
And if you could all please stand for the national anthem of Great Britain. Gentlemen, please congratulate your winners of the World Supercross Championship here in Abu Dhabi. It's now time for the celebrations. Congratulations, Max Anstey, Chris Bloss, and Maxim Dupre. So a fantastic night then for these three riders, Grant Langston, but the happiest man on the podium has to be Max Anstey, followed closely by Bloss and Dupre. Oh, no doubt. I mean, three riders, three countries and your fellow countrymen on top. Nice to hear the British anthem <laughs> here in Abu Dhabi. Uh, Essex, the WSX third final is coming up in just a few moments. Sheikh Said Grand Mosque is located here in Abu Dhabi, situated on more than 30 acres with 82 domes of seven different sizes. It is the largest mosque in the country and the key place of worship for daily prayers. 
The mosque is large enough to accommodate over 40,100 worshippers, while the main prayer room can, held, uh, can hold over 7,000. The courtyard, with its floral design, measures about 17,000 meters square, 180,000 square feet, and is considered to be the largest example of marble mosaic in the world. Some fascinating land sites and landmarks here. Grant Langston. Oh, yeah. This place is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, the amount of time spent here, just a few days, has just been incredible. Um, wish we could have spent more. Got to spend some good time with this guy on camera, Kenny Roxon. He was definitely had a bigger smile on his face that day. I think dealing with some pain, trying to get through this, and trying to get in back to the points lead. But Kristen, what do you got for us? Yeah, I'm standing by with Phil Nicoletti. He'll be starting from the front row here tonight in the final GP race of the WSX class. We're starting bikes, getting ready to go. Phil, what is going through your head for this final GP race? Uh, a tad bit of carnage, but need eyes all around my head so I can see what's going on, but we'll see how it is in this last one. Guys, chaos is what we expect, and I think that's what we'll get as well. Yeah, and Phil Nicoletti going to the line in seventh place, of course, and uh, lining up behind him would normally have been Aaron Tanti, who went out in that first race. So. Uh, there's going to be uh, nobody lining up behind him, which means he's not in fear of being hit from behind. Sure. And uh, look at 75 here, Josh Hill as well. Nobody in front of him because that was Brayton's spot originally, but he cannot go until that gate drops. Well, I was going to say, he could creep a little bit, though, because that's legal. <laughs> well, these riders are down here now, making their way out on track for their sighting lap. Chad Reed is down on the start line and Chad uh, a word about the start gates please yeah guys I'm standing in Ken Roxon's actual position of where he's starting and what's crazy to me not only is he on the back of the gate but everybody using starting blocks nowadays Kenny's having to blindly navigate and pick up his feet in time so that he doesn't drag his feet on Matt Moss's starting blocks it's actually quite a, an impressive <laughs> maneuver that these guys are going to do in the second row Actually, that's something that we uh, wouldn't have thought about, you know, yeah. the, uh, the perils of a second row start with the nursery blocks that the riders use these days. Nursery blocks, <laughs> yeah. You know, it, even guys with long legs still use them because it, it's almost, you know, it's like a 100 meter, you know, sprint. It gives you a little push on the bike, keeps your weight forward. You see the mechanics, like this is all planned. Riders tell the mechanics, I want my blocks there. I want no dirt. I want, you know, cover this, do that. Um, we talk about motocross, it sounds like an individual sport, but it really is a full team effort. Obviously, once the gate drops, yes, it feels more like an individual sport, but it's going to be interesting. I'll tell you what, I've been really impressed with Ken. He's fought that first moto, went down, we were concerned, fought back the second moto. I'm really excited to see what he can do this third moto. There's been some uh, interesting results so far, hasn't there, in this uh, SX class, this WSX class, of course, because we had uh, that first race with um, the bar banging going on between Freezy and Wilson as Freezy oh, yeah. was uh, given the win over Savachi, Cedric Subaras, Mitchell Oldenburg and Thomas Ramet. And then, of course, there was a little bit of payback, but that was also Ken Roxon going out as he tried to make that move for the win on yeah. the final turn on... Uh, Freezy, and of course it cost him, and he's got a, maybe a, a slight knee or a slight ankle injury. But then Wilson bounced back in race two, didn't he, with a vengeance, and he came away with a win, edging out Freezy and Roxon, and that was a brave ride from the number one there you see on that red front plate. Yeah, right now you're seeing a lot of big names on that on that TV screen. But for Roxon, can he use that? I, I'm trying to, I call it like the race's integrity or the. Um, how they're just able to see things happen. Kenny can almost predict what's going to happen in front of him. And uh, I think with that said, he's going to find his way through. And uh, I don't know. I'm going to go with he's going to put on the box. Yeah. Maybe even better. Well, let's uh, go down to Kristen. She's got some news about Kenny. Yeah, as I was just walking past Ken Roxon, he was kind of getting adjusted on the bike. You can tell he's sore. His right knee hurts him. He was limping. However, he gave a big scream. It actually startled me. He's trying to get his adrenaline up and going because that is the only way he's going to be able to fight through the pain in this final GP race tonight, guys. 
Thanks, Kristen. A couple of handicaps for Kenny Rocks, of course. Second row start, can't go until Matt Moss goes. And of course, that knee injury, that right knee that he caught as he fell in that final turn, attempting that pass on Vince Friese. But you know what? He was really up against it in that second race and he battled on through and uh, a fantastic ride for him. Let's go back down to Chad Reed. Coming through is he's had to start in the same spot every time. And so it's almost like a play by play and it's like a deja vu. And he's just getting better and better and finding all the positions. So I look for him to get to the front in this one. Yeah. yeah. Nice work down there on the ground, guys. There's Freezy. Well, he's found a bit of a breeze from somewhere, possibly his mechanic or whatever, but uh, Freezy in the breezy. <laughs> One minute to go, and then, of course, we are going to be getting the 30-second board, and then, of course, the, the gate will drop. That was a really good point from Chad. Basically, these guys aren't used to being on the back row. Now, all of a sudden, third time around, you learn, okay, the pack does this. They push wide here. So-and-so did that. So... I agree. I think Kenny can figure it out. But the other problem is the other guys are going, hey, I'm figuring it out myself too. Yeah, so Chiz just getting his uh, bike started here as the 30-second board is being readied to be hoisted up into the air. But it's going to be tight here because Dean Wilson, who eventually came home six in race one, he came away with a win in race two. Could have been a two-time race winner tonight. He's definitely on course for a potential podium. Possibly as well, Savachi and maybe... Ken Roxon, an outside chance, but he would probably have to go out and win this one and hope other results fall his way. But uh, after finishing 14th in race one, he's got a lot of work to do. 30-second board, turn sideways. WSX, the third and final race here at the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, gets underway in the Etihad Arena. And once again, Freezy to the inside. Savachi alongside him, and we may have a new leader by the time we reach turn two. There's Chisholm at the back, and it is Savachi who leads, and Oldenburg moves into third place. Oh, Roxon snuck through there as well. I think he's about six, so not bad. Yeah. But, well, Sabachi, great start. And he's just tucked in behind the 85 of Cedric Subaras. So the 85 of Subaras riding the uh, Bud Racing Kawasaki. But Vince Friese, the first time he hasn't made a good start because he won the heat race from a, a whole shot. And, uh, of course, uh, his first race as well. And he was so close to winning the second race. I like the way you say not a good start. He's <laughs> yes, yeah. but I know what you mean. But look, he's already looking at going after Savachi, but not quite close enough. So Savachi getting ready to hit the line then. One lap complete. And this final race here is a 14-lapper. And Savachi knows he has to be patient, but he knows he cannot afford to leave the door open as well. With Phil Nicoletti, who was seven to the grid. What a fantastic start for Nicoletti on the FXR Club MX Yamaha there, in third place, number 69. Well, we talk about points, championship overalls, but let's not forget there is an extra point for the fastest lap in this third and final main event. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on oh, that. Oh, there was a yellow flag. Oh, down in the corner, Oldenburg, I think. Yeah, Oldenburg tagged with another rider. Him and, I think, was that Wade? Oh, sorry. So do we have a new leader? I think we do. Yeah, we were just keeping an eye on what was going there. And of course, uh, Freezy now leading the way. Roxon in second. Savachi getting punted. And there he is there in third position. So uh, we were distracted by yellow flags here. Watch this here. As he comes over the finish line jump, charges in the inside, just runs it in hot. <laughs> and out he goes, and of course he couldn't get the drive through the woods. Kenny was right on point, and he moved into second. And Roxon moves into the lead, but well, look he had how it briefly. tentative he was there. Oh. Look how close these three riders are. We've got a game on. We've got a race on here, folks. Right, let's go down to Chad Reed because he's got some information for us as well. Guys, like I said, Ken Roxon is not only one of the best here tonight, or the best here tonight. He's one of the best in the world at slicing through the pack and making just split system to decisions. I'm really impressed, and the fact that we got, what do we got, 10 laps to go? I like that my prediction was pretty good. And here comes Kenny once again. This time he makes it stick, he closes down the exit, and Freezy has to sit there in second position, and I wonder what kind of payback, I wonder how, how much money he's got in his back pocket for that kind of payback, Joey Savacci. Oh, Savacci is gonna, when he gets a chance, he's gonna smash the number three. Mark my words. Fans on their feet for Roxon as he comes through as the race leader. But 
but uh, freezing under pressure from Savacci, who will not take lightly for that move that put him out of the track at the end of lap two. We've had five laps complete, we're on lap six, and uh, Roxon 2.2 seconds clear of this battle for second position. Savacci very efficient through the whoops, but just can't get close enough, but he's working outside insides. Is there going to be something here? Yes, there is, potentially. He goes to the inside, elbow into the side of Freeze. He runs him off the side of the track. He has to yield and give up the position, and he's reluctant to do that at the moment. Yeah, that's... He's going to have to get that position up, or it's going to be a penalty. And he's already on a warning, if not a penalty already, from that smash on Wilson. Meanwhile, Wilson in fifth place at the moment, behind Gregory Aranda. And Aranda coming into view there, the number 20, and then the 15 in red of Wilson trying to line his way past the Frenchman. Well, let's see what happens again now. Sabachi, <laughs> will he try the same move? <laughs> well, it, it, my mind casts back to the interview that Wilson did after winning race two, where he said the way that Freeze is riding, slowing us down, probably down to about two miles an hour, you know, he just needs to sort of uh, just focus on the racing, the which only, is what Sabachi is doing. The only good thing is, Kenny's checked out, of course, and uh, Freeze is slowing him on down, but it's bringing the rest of the pack back in the field, I mean, into the race, so it, this is far from over. This going to be a lot more drama, mark my words. Yeah, and that uh, could be Gregory Aranda because he got good drive, but uh, wasn't able to capitalize, and they touched there as well. And almost banging bars there with uh, Aranda. And uh, we are getting ready to go back down to Chad Reed again because there's so much action going on on track here. Chad Reed, what have you got for us this time? Track like looked like in front of him at this point, but he has backed up the field all the way to Dean Wilson, and I just think that this thing could uh, get real interesting here. The last six laps. Yeah, it's going to be a long six laps. We've had eight laps complete. We're on lap nine, and uh, bikes moving around all over the place. Savacci under pressure from the 20 of Aranda. He has to go defensive, and then he switches to the outside to try and close off, and that allows Wilson to move through past Aranda. Yeah. So Wilson, all of a sudden, up to fourth place. Great ride in that from the 15. The problem right now for these guys is they're attacking and defending at the same time. But that was good for Dino because, unfortunately for Aranda, he got the short end of the stick on that one. But Savachi had to do what he had to do. Now, let's see. Uh, Gabe frees a few bike length lead. And uh, as soon as they, if, or I say, as soon as they do catch up, it's going to get close. Very time is ticking down. Well, leaving the door open. Whoa, that's where he found his way past Aranda a lap ago after what was a bit of a bottleneck there. But Savachi is back there as well. So Savachi third, Wilson fourth, Aranda five. And uh, Cedric Subaras there, number 85, just in the background for Bud Racing, Kawasaki. But Savachi. But uh, 10 laps complete. We are now on lap 11. But Wilson here in fourth on the number 15, trying to find his way back past Savachi. And he's got good drive and he may. Oh, he just gets his nose chopped again in that tight left. That's the hard part when you go through those sections. Is kind of funnels back down the one line and Dino is a very respectful rider he doesn't want to you know smash the march out of the way but at the same time if he plays nice he's never going to get a chance to you know get up to freeze who is, I think we oh, know what's best. Wave yellows and it's uh, Freezy down so Freezy out of second place Savachi goes through and Subaras is also going to go through Subaras in fifth Freezy down to sixth position is that the comeuppance is that the comeuppance, maybe, you know, yeah. like the reward for the, the way that he's been riding? You know, all these riders queuing up behind him like a mobile chicane, and all of a sudden they've now been released because of Freeze's uh, slip over there in that yeah. turn. Yeah, I mean, at the same time, it was Freeze the snake himself, but it is what it is. It's racing, and uh, it's going to change the overall, obviously. So Massively, because now Savachi is possibly in with a shout of a win. Wilson there, not doing himself any favors, uh, any harm either. Well, I was going to say, if Dino gets around Savachi, I'd be really curious about the overall. But for Roxon, Freeze's mistake really brings the championship back in, you know, back in play. Line. But it was uh, Savachi who was potentially leading the championship after race one when uh, Roxon was down in 14. Obviously, he had a good result in race two. He's having another good result here in race three. It's certainly good for the championship for the number 17. No doubt, no doubt. Savachi been solid all evening. 
as Savacci and Wilson make their way to the end of lap 13. Roxon here already. Halfway round lap 14, he's got some traffic ahead of him as he emerges back into the arena for the final time. Fans on their feet making noise for the defending champion. It's been a rough night for Ken Roxon on the PMG Progressive Insurance Suzuki, but he's bounced back and he does it in fine style. Rounds out the night with a win in the final race. Ken Roxon, congratulations. And uh, he had to dig deep tonight, no doubt about that. Fantastic way to end the evening. Maybe not the night he hoped for overall, but just a warrior fighting through everything. And hopefully we'll see the results soon because it's close for the podium. Yeah, well, Ken Roxon, your winner then after 14 laps from Savacci. 13 seconds clear in the end. Wilson third, around the fourth, Super Ass, Vince Freezy six, Chisholm seven. We are waiting for Thomas Ramette to come through in the line eight, Hill nine, and Cade Clayson ten. And uh, here is confirmation of those results. But a fantastic win for Roxon, edging out comfortably in the end. Savacci for second, but Savacci may have the last lap in terms of the overall look in the championship standings. Wilson third, Aranda fourth, Subaras running out with a fifth in that final race. Wow. <laughs> what, what a lot to pack in in one night. Friends, friends were made, enemies were made. As we look at the highlights, the gate was dropped. Look at Rocks are buried in the pack there, just trying to thread the needle. Gets to the inside, but it's still mid pack there. Oldenburg gets to the inside. But look, the third. but look how smart Roxon was through those first couple of corners. Emerged in around about fifth or sixth position. But it was uh, Savacci up front, but not for long because Freezy got out those elbows and sent him to the outside. Yeah, and then Kenny trying to figure out how to get around. But and then Savacci wants to return the favor. Freezy did relinquish that position, which I thought was incorrect. But then he got caught out anyway. As he started to hold everybody up, he went down. And that dropped him down to sixth position. Handed a, a massive advantage for Kenny Roxon, who was already a million miles out in front as well. But he went on to win from Savacci and Wilson. So let's get ready to go down to Kristen. And uh, she's got uh, quite a few riders down there. And I think she's going to start with Joey Savacci. I'm going to start with our overall winner on the night, Joey Savacci. You felt overlooked in Birmingham. Is it redeeming to now walk away from Abu Dhabi as the overall winner? I'm just glad to walk away uh, one piece. You know, it's, uh, it's unfortunate. Most of us on here are, uh, are pretty solid racers, and we give each other respect and room. And uh, some of us, some of us don't. It's unfortunate. Um, I'm sure the crowd likes it, and it's good entertainment. but. For us, at the end of the day, you know, like I, I watched Ken right in front of me, almost just, you know, unfortunately go down on not on his own terms. And for me, I mean, listen, I'm all about hard racing. Like what Vince did to me here, I'm, I'm good with it by all means. But when you start cross jumping and doing things that are out of your hands, I'm not about it. But uh, I wouldn't say overlooked. Just uh, I'm just out here trying to do my job. Joey, well done taking the overall here tonight, guys. Dean Wilson, second overall. Uh, solid night. First uh, interesting race in the first one. Uh, I guess, what's your thoughts? Oh, man, so gnarly. But, hey, I told Vince right now, you're, you're making me tough. You know what I mean? He's toughening me up because I have no choice but want to blast him every corner. So uh, it's fun. I'm, I'm behind Joey and him, and he's brake checking him and, like, stuffing him. And so it's, it's gnarly. But, hey, you guys enjoy that? My vote is we do more tight races. It's uh, the tempers are high down here. Vince, when you're wearing that target, how do you mentally keep it together? And how were you able to round out the podium here with that much pressure? Yeah, I mean, that was a blast for me. Um, it was unfortunate. I think I caught a, a rock on my front brake in that last one. And um, it snagged landing this triple and went down. But uh, man, I was having a blast. That's, that's fun. You know, nobody's hurting anybody. Nobody's T-boning anybody. We're, we're racing hard. Um, on a track, on an arena cross track, that's what you got to do. Um, I mean, the fastest guy in the world's here tonight, and he couldn't find his way by us. So, you got to make, you got to get aggressive to make moves, right? So, um, they got aggressive with me. I got aggressive with them. Um, Dean, Dean whines a little bit. He, he's a pretty big whiner, but uh, we're we're gonna make him tough, and um, we're gonna race him here again in a couple weeks. All right, thank you so much, Vince. Guys, that is it from Abu Dhabi.
Down Fighting talk there from our top three <laughs> riders. And, uh, he's not scared, is he? His Amazing chat. weekend, Kenny. I just, uh, you know, starting at the back of the pack, uh, not back of the pack, I guess the back of the pack, but second row. Um, you know, for somebody that gets to stand in the middle and watch you, it was really impressive of how patient you were because it was uh, wearing on you, I bet. Yeah, I was just really trying to pick my battles, you know. Um, this is, I've never really done this style of racing with these tight tracks, like the aggressiveness. Um, I mean, we get aggressive, but this was kind of new to me. Um, I honestly felt the most comfortable actually in the third main. I was a little bit afraid that that break in between with my foot, like I could feel it swelling in the boot. And um, But honestly, I hyped myself up before the last main and uh, got some adrenaline in me and uh, made it through really good. I mean, I think I made about as many passes happen as I possibly can in all three mains. And uh, I'm really, really happy that I could finish off the last one with a win um, with this kind of track. Like, anything is possible. You can finish first, you can finish last. Obviously, you saw that. And it was a lot more slippery than I actually thought it was going to be. And how I crashed was I was too close behind Vince, and I wanted to square it up. So I turned a bit harder than normally, and there's a little ridge right there, like a little rut. I think my front end just hit it, and uh, my foot got squished between frame and dirt. And, um, yeah, that was the, the painful one. But glad we, uh, we get out of here healthy, somewhat healthy. Yeah, good rebound and heal up that foot, and we'll see you at the Australian Grand Prix in a couple weeks. Thank you, guys. So good job from all the guys then. And of course, uh, congratulations to Joey Savacci. Here's how the standings look now. Savacci, the new championship leader from Roxon. Wilson into third, Breezy four, and Hill now fifth. Abu Dhabi, the capital of the United Arab Emirates, sits off the mainland on an island in the Persian Gulf. Its focus on oil exports and commerce is reflected by the skyline's modern towers and shopping mega centers such as Abu Dhabi and Marina Malls. Abu Dhabi's emirate is the wealthiest of the UAE in terms of gross domestic product and per capita income. It is the country's center of politics and industry and a major culture and commerce center. So riders then getting ready to uh, be presented down there on the podium. And uh, thanks for you guys for sticking around and making your voices heard here this weekend. Very much appreciated by all of us here and all of the fans and the riders and the teams as well. So uh, great job and uh, great noise from up there. You should be proud of yourselves. In fact, give yourselves a round of applause now. But uh, Grant Langston and I um, had great fun calling this, but there's uh, a bit of a delay here because possibly the uh, officials reviewing uh, potential infringement uh, based on uh, 
maybe Vince Friese going off track when uh, Savacci pushed him wide, either because he cut the course or didn't give the position back. So uh, possibly a review of the podium situation here, but uh, we are just waiting for confirmation on that. But uh, Grant Langston, it has been an epic night, and it has just, I mean, if you described it in one word, I would probably say, wow. <laughs> that is a good way to explain it, but you can see Savacci and Friese having a conversation. Again, these are grown men. They'll talk it out. They don't agree. There's going to be some feistiness, but at the end of the day, they all want to win really bad. And uh, it's like any sporting event, right? You Absolutely. think someone attacked you harder than you should have, and uh, you're going to tell them how you feel. Absolutely. But at the end of the day, this is also uh, an FIM World Supercross Championship. So uh, points and uh, championships and bonuses and things like that are all on the line. And uh, it, these things need to be sorted before we get there on the podium. Done right, and it's got to be right, right. But watch this. Savarchi comes up the inside, makes some contact, freeze, leaves the track, and again, right there, it looks like Joey has his wheel ahead. So from the outside, he probably should have given that position back, but I'm not an official. We'll see what they say. But they're down there chatting, as you can tell. A lot of emotions. Kenny, a little bit of uh, pain, but what a comeback, you know, for the... The whole evening just, uh, man, from yeah. the back row, uh, yeah. dominating that last main event. Yeah, what a turnaround for Ken Rocks and obviously uh, in with a chance for the win in that first race before just catching his foot on that ridge as he came in to land off that triple. That left him in 14th. He bounced back with a solid result and then, of course, came back to win the final race. There you see Dean Wilson just out of pictures, his wife and the, their son, Ewan, just had his first birthday. So happy birthday to the little man and... Uh, for daddy on the box. But what about Joey Savacci, of course, uh, arrived here, seven points behind Ken Roxon in the championship chase, leaves here as the new championship leader with a round to go. Of course, that's gonna be at Marble Stadium at Melbourne on the uh, 24th, 25th of November, and the final round, of course. So, so much law, uh, so much more to look forward to. British Grand Prix, we saw that earlier on in the year in July. Abu Dhabi Grand Prix is done and dusted here at Yas Island at the Etihad Arena, and we've got the Australian Grand Prix at Melbourne still to come at the Marvel Stadium. And of course, we hope you can join us live for that on uh, WSX TV. But uh, Kenny Roxon, tough night at the office for him, but he's still in with a shot of lifting what would be a back-to-back -back World Supercross Championship, potentially. I wouldn't even say within a shot. I would say he's still the guy. He's still the guy. He, he's limping now, but this guy has come back from catastrophic injuries over the years tough as nails and uh yeah look at him look in the whoops the night's over and he's still trying to figure out how could i have done that better and how to improve maybe because like you said the circuit was more slippery than he thought it was going to be and uh this is him celebrating as he hit the line celebrating to the fans there they appreciated his efforts out on track today especially after that first race crash and uh, what a way to round out the abu dhabi grand prix here for ken roxon yeah you know Things don't always go to plan, but even though the night started off rough, it just got better and better for him, actually. And, um, yeah, just a testament to his grit and determination. There's a reason why he's got the number one plate, and the red plate has been because he has just been the man. But he's had some stiff competition, great riding tonight from several riders. I've I got to say, Dean Wilson, fantastic evening. He rode strong. Uh, freeze, hard, gritty. Some might say dirty, but you know what? I also have respect for guys that will do whatever it takes to win, including pushing the envelope to a point where the officials have to say, that's not okay. Well, when we arrived here and we first laid eyes on the racetrack here in the Etihad Arena, oh, of we course, knew. Uh, <laughs> his, so uh, still looking at this decision here as uh, Farisi went wide and uh, Savacci went to the inside. Watch carefully though, when, when Vince exits the track, yeah, he's behind Joey, barely. And I know as a racer in your head, you're like, I wasn't behind. I had that spot. He pushed me off. I deserve it. But the officiating crew are going to look at every angle, every slow where they can, and they'll make the decision. But I think I know the outcome. Okay. Well, uh, at the moment, our uh, top three here this weekend in the uh, WSX class are uh, Joey Savacci. And uh, Wilson and Freezy, but uh, the final time we're looking at this again, and of course, when you see Tell me what you think, down Paul. the inside, well, he gives him an elbow, and I think 
Okay, if I'm going to defend Vince Freezy here, it's difficult to get across back on track there because of the tough block and carrying the speed. So all he should have done was, if he just hit the brake here, let Savacci gain that position and then resume the race on the exit of the tunnel, I think we wouldn't be having this delay and we wouldn't be looking at that, uh, you know, as a, as a pass possible penalty. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, but again, as a racer myself, I've looked at things from both sides. I'm Vince Freeze. I was forced off the track. I was in front of him. And they're like, no, you weren't. And then flip side, Savacci's going to say, hey, what, what the heck? You well, know, he blew by. <laughs> well, it's definitely track. been a challenging Grand Prix here this weekend, hasn't it? We first arrived here. We saw the track. We knew it was going to be small, tight, twisty. The challenge of that double stack start gate and uh, not wanting to be on the front row, but, uh, but on the back row. Both of our... <laughs> Number ones, defending champions, points leaders coming in. Shane McElrath and Ken Roxon were in exactly that situation ahead of three races tonight. They were facing adversity. Yeah. And everyone was talking about how difficult this track would be to pass on. But as you said, and as Chad said uh, down there on the track during our broadcast, the cream always comes to the top. And that's exactly what uh, certain riders were able to do. They found their way through. Uh, maybe they were helped by one or two incidents on track as well. But even still, you've got to be in it to win it. You've got to make those commitments to make those passes. And that's exactly what somebody like Ken Roxon did to uh, force his way towards uh, the front. And that's how he ended up winning race number three here tonight. Yeah, I mean, as you just said, this track lends itself to aggressive racing. So there we go. There's Ewan. Birthday boy. Your birthday boy. He's partied out. Mama holding on to him, Sarah. So hopefully we can get this resolved as soon as possible. But obviously there's a, uh, a bit of a decision to make here. It's the podium and it's the points in the championship as well. And with just one round to go, it is an important, important decision yeah. to make. And um, I'm sure there'll be, you know, ramifications and repercussions of it. You know, there may be even sort of like uh, counter protests and things and uh, sure, sure. things like that. Well, but they just want to get it right, first of all, before we leave the arena. That's first and foremost. I mean, at the end of the day, it's frustrating when it takes a while. But... You want them to get it right. No matter what, get it right. So right now you see Adam Bailey chatting with Dino Wilson. And maybe I think we might have some results. So we're just close to doing the podium then. We're just waiting on the final outcome of the podium here. And uh, we will bring that to you as soon as possible. But I'm, I'm told we're just moments away from a decision here. And uh, who is third, who is second, and uh, who will be running out the winner? Well, the winner and the uh, second place, not in question. It's just that third step of the podium that is more the issue that needs to be resolved. But uh, sorry to keep hopping on about it, but uh, there is a delay for a reason, and that needs to be resolved. But I'm told we are just moments away from that decision. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, tense moments down there, Grant Langston. I'm not sure if you've ever experienced something like that in your racing career where you've had to wait on a decision or something like that. Maybe, maybe not. I have, but not, <laughs> not, not in front of a live audience and on live <laughs> camera. <laughs> it was usually uh, after the, the fact. But, um, again, amazing the crowd's hanging out. I'm, I'm pumped. Don't forget, the freestyle contest is coming up too. And... If any of you know anything about freestyle, you'll know one thing. Harry Bink is a madman, and his buddy Cam Sinclair and Blake Williams are also just, they're on the podium of mental athletes as well as talented. <laughs> but uh, you see them setting it up. You see that super ramp there right in front of the, uh, right next to the finish line takeoff. That is because... You're going to see something, if you've never seen it in person, it is mind-boggling. Double backflip. Yeah, there was a show earlier on, of course, and I'm wondering why that's so, why so many people are waiting to stay. They know there is still an F FMX display to come here inside this Etihad Arena in Abu Dhabi. And, um, yeah, great stuff that they do now. And it's been, it's come on so long, uh, so far, hasn't it, over the years in terms of its progression, double backflips and front flips and all kinds of different stuff. But, uh, you know, I wouldn't, wouldn't want to be me hitting that ramp, that's for sure, trying stuff like that. You've never hit a ramp, Paul. A dirt Neither ramp. Neither have I. <laughs> <laughs> a dirt ramp, yes. Yes, As yes. a racer, but uh, a metal ramp, you know, with a bit of a hook on it like that, certainly not. And also, Alex Buchholt is the fourth rider. So, not to mention, we talked, this is World Supercross. Riders from everywhere in the world. We saw like five different nationalities in the top five. 
But when it comes to freestyle, it's pretty much Australia, Australia, Australia. <laughs> oh, and Australia. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Domination. So, Dean Wilson down there then, and of course, uh, Adam Bailey, CEO of uh, SX Global, the man responsible for putting all of this on. So, uh, great to see him in here, of course, uh, wouldn't be anywhere else. But uh, give a shout out to the fans. Fans you guys are very patient. Awesome. Seriously, give yourselves a round of applause. Still here after hours and hours. There you go. Smile at the TV. Take a selfie. Yeah, it's definitely been a challenging race, challenging race, racetrack, and of course a challenging set of races as well. But uh, Vince Bruzzi hasn't gone anywhere yet, so I'm assuming that he's still in the uh, hunt for that third place uh, step of the podium. And I wonder if that means that uh, why Kenny's there as well. Of course, he's the outgoing championship leader, but I wonder if he is sitting third or fourth in the championship, uh, fourth in the overall classification at the moment, and would get promoted to third. I wonder why that is why he's hanging around and uh, why Freese is hanging around as well. So uh, a lot to be decided down here. Well, there's also the red plate. Who's going to grab it, right? Um. Yeah, there's a couple of points in it, but uh, will it change the red plate? Maybe we can see the uh, championship graphics again just to sort of... Uh, well, if someone was, a certain someone was actually disqualified, absolutely it would change it. But I don't, I don't think... That'll happen. I don't believe it's deserved either way, but I think there's potentially a penalty coming. Even though Freeze went down and lost those positions, the fact of the matter is, if they deem that he rejoined the track ahead of Savachi when he shouldn't have, that is going to be a penalty, and how they handle it, only the FIM knows. A lot of discussions going on down there between various team managers and riders and officials as uh, we still try to and hope to resolve this situation as quickly as possible. And uh, it has been going on for quite a while now. And um, not there seen anything <laughs> like this, not seen anything like this in uh, all the years of my broadcast and something that's needed to take a, a long decision like this. But uh, Kevin Williams down there. Talking to you, Reeve, from Froth Team Honda, Larry Brooks, been around a long time. Tony Alessi in the background, so a lot of team managers all, um, I'm sure, given their point of view and defending their riders, difficult job. Would not want to be involved in this. So, are we any closer? Are we any closer to uh, getting a podium result here? And, of course, the uh, championship standings and all of the rest of it and the red plate and all the things that lead to Melbourne in three weeks' time. Well, they seem to be taking it down the corridors and uh, away from the racetrack floor. There we go. So we are getting ready then for the podium and it has been resolved, finally. Ladies and gentlemen, it's podium time once again for the FIM World Supercross Championship here in Abu Dhabi. And here to present the trophies, the CEO of Ethara, Saif Rashid Al Noemi, and FIM representative Peter Doyle. And in third place, number three, Vince Freezy. And in second position, the number 15, Dean Wilson. And representing the championship leading team to receive the red plate, please welcome Dave Antelot. And please now welcome your round winner, and please congratulate number 17, Joey Savacci of Rick Ware Racing, Mobile One on the Kawasaki. He is also the new championship leader.
And please be standing for the national anthem of the United States of America for Joey Savacci. Ladies and gentlemen, please congratulate your winners of the World Supercross Championship here in Abu Dhabi. It's now time for the celebrations. Well, it's been a fantastic night here. It's had its moments, it's had its ups and downs, but it's definitely been dramatic. But uh, your top three here in the WSX category, Joey Savacci, Dean Wilson, Vince Greasy, and uh, Grant Langston, what a fantastic week we've had here, here at the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix at the Etihad Arena. No lack of drama, that's for sure. Fantastic racing, both in MX, sorry, SX2 and SX Klaus. Some uh, hurt feelings, but also some points gained, points lost, makes it more dramatic moving so, forward. So just one round to go then on uh, the 24th, 25th of November at Melbourne, Australia for the uh, Marvel Stadium edition. And of course, uh, we will be there for that, the third and final round in three weeks time. And uh, if it's anything like what we experienced here in Abu Dhabi, then we are in for an absolute riot and a treat. If the racing, uh, well, it's gonna be a slightly bigger stadium as well, so it might be a little bit more spread out, but even still, we can't wait to get there. Melbourne is next up and uh, I can't wait. So the celebrations will continue here then, of course, uh, certainly into the early hours of the night, but these guys, some of them will be on a plane back this evening, back tomorrow, back to where they came from and um, they will be getting ready for that third and final round, Grant Langston. Well, some of them are actually heading out later this evening because uh, next weekend is an Australian Supercross round. A lot of them doing the entire series. But getting back to tonight's winner, Joey Savarchi, he's ridden strong, he rode hard, he was tough, he was gritty, he dealt with multiple things, he's been solid. Nice to see him take this, well deserved. Well, that's it from us here at the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix at the Etihad Arena. My name's Paul Malin, Grant Langston. I've had a blast. I'm sure he has as well. My thanks also to uh, Chad Reed and uh, Kristen Beat and the rest of the crew here. Thanks to the fans around here. We are out of time. We'll see you in Melbourne for the third and final round. Bye for what? Thanks for watching. Bye for now.